What's up guys, this is Ray, welcome to Asian Films, and today we'll be talking about the 2018 Japanese movie Laughing Under the Clouds, directed by Motohiro Katsuyuki, the director of Ajin, and stars Fukushi Sota. And this is based off of anime and manga, the likes of which I haven't actually read admittedly, but you know, as I always say when it comes to li these live action adaptations, you should be able to watch the adaptation and enjoy it as a one-time standalone experience. And I think for the most part, Laughing Under the Clouds does that, because as someone who has not read the anime manga I found myself enjoying many parts of this movie and so the story of laughing under the clouds well you know first of all we uh, we learn about this demonic many-headed serpent by the name of Orochi and he revives every 300 years to terrorize the humans and uh, the time of his revival is fast approaching and so his followers the Fumo clan they start to locate the vessel the vessel of which the uh, which houses Orochi's spirit uh, which he uses to ultimately revive into a physical form. And while the Fuma is uh, going around causing havoc, trying to locate the vessel, the the government, the Japanese government, dispatches the Yama Inu, which are these elite group of trained soldiers uh, who are specially trained to to seal off Orochi. And caught in the middle of this is uh, is Kumo Tenka and his brothers. So as the three groups gradually come together in their final confrontation, we get promised a whole lot of exciting action and adventure and I and I gotta admit for the most part this movie does deliver on that it was quite a fun movie to say the least but you know let's dive right into it as far as the positives are concerned definitely the action sequences were a lot of fun there are plenty of cool action and fighting uh, sequences that will satisfy uh, those of us who just want something fun and action-packed to enjoy and you know, one of the scenes that come to mind it was towards the beginning of the movie and it was this long fight scene between one of the Kumo brothers and a bunch of Fuma clan members and I remember there it was just one guy versus a whole many like Dynasty Warriors style and uh, they would duke it out and then suddenly the camera would transition from uh, from focusing on the on the brother and the bad guys you know third person Point of view if you will and it would transition to first person so it would be behind uh the brother's eyes and it would the camera work for the most part was pretty seamless and it would transition uh real I, I think very smoothly from third person to first person and then back to third person again it did this several times throughout the course of the sequence and it was fun and it was a lengthy take too or at least it was edited so that way it looked like a uh, lengthy take and then you know the camera work that you know that being said the camera work was also quite fun and captured all the all the fun uh, fight sequences. I also dig the costumes and the set design. You know, I'm not sure how accurate these costumes are to the original source material, but I thought for the most part, then they uh, if if a movie has costumes, you know, if a live action adaptation has costumes that look better than your the, your uh, high quality cosplay kind of uh, costumes, then I think it's going in in some kind of right direction. And for the most part, this movie either is on that level of high level cosplay or is a little bit better you know I think because of that this movie's costumes was great and also the music did a good job at keeping you hyped and excited especially when it came to building up towards the action sequences and during the actual sequences themselves and even though the soundtrack it felt was very small in number I thought for the most part it was fun and of course Fukushi Sota I love Fukushi Sota I think he has charisma uh, in in spades and I think he definitely shows that in this movie although there were some times where I think he was uh, forcing himself to laugh uh, kind of uh, kind of too hard you know part of Fukushi Sota's uh, character you know Tenka is that he tries to smile throughout the tough times I think when you have that kind of concept of a character Fukushi Sota is is perfect for that I mean if you see his other roles like Kamen Rider Forze he's the kind of guy who's just loud and obnoxiously loud and just smiles all around and it fits this character but I think maybe the character was asking for much more than what Fukushi Sota actually delivers but though that being said I still think there was nothing bad going on with uh, uh, Fukushi Sota's overall performance and you know and uh, to top it all off he has a shirt he has a scene where he goes shirtless under a waterfall and you know that's definitely for the ladies and I think you know the all-around cast was it felt like it was uh, it was all full of all dudes, so I think it definitely catered to the female crowd, you know, to some of the guy crowd too. It enjoys seeing guys duke it out. And as far as the adapted story is concerned, I thought it was all right. You know, I think when it, the big one of the biggest problems that comes with live action adaptations of anime or manga is that you have so many story arcs to cover within a two hour time limit, and because of that, uh, some of these adaptations feel disjointed or just more episodic 
perspective how it should actually feel you know episodics to the point where it was probably uh better built to be a tv drama or you know just left alone in anime form but i think the way uh laughing under the clouds adapted the story i thought it did well for the most part it didn't feel too disjointed for the most part it felt like one uh seamless continuous story and everything related to each other by the end as far as the negatives are concerned with laughing under the clouds well i think i thought most of the cast well either the performances or the characters or both were just either flat out boring you know just dull just dry I, you know i think you know fuxi sota had all the charisma in the world in this i think he sucked out all the charisma from everyone else i mean you had some characters that delivered uh decent performances like i enjoyed kiri yamaren as uh as shirasu and you know i think part of that is reason is because i enjoyed watching him in kamen rider double but for, like i think especially when it came to uh tenka's two younger brothers i thought that you know overall the three together didn't have as much chemistry as the story demanded you know the, i felt uh at the center of the the heart of this story was the brotherly bond between tenka and his two brothers and for that to happen you needed chemistry between the three main characters i think the chemistry wasn't all that there i think there needed to be more something more in order for me get, to get me to feel uh that these three brothers are 100 percent for each other that they're the brothers and i felt like there wasn't exactly enough to get me to believe it maybe it was because their uh their actions felt too forced or at times that there wasn't just enough you know either Either way I just wasn't buying 100% of it. I also felt like the story needed more um, more coverage of the Yame Inu because we get introduced to the Yame Inu. You, first of all you know Tanka has some history with him. He has a photo posing with the rest of them so you know that he has some kind of relationship to him. But we don't really get to know much of this group. There's about five I think so five of them and you only get to know the the main character the the I'm sorry the leader of the Yami Ino but they're all sorts of pretty cool and interesting characters uh that are in the background for in this group and you know you have the guy with the buster sword you got the guy who specializes in guns a guy who has who specializes in fist fighting but you only get to see them in action sequences I'm pretty sure the the source material goes into more depth to cover these guys and and probably because of the time limit we have with a regular live action movie Movie, we just don't have enough to squeeze all that backstory in but because of that they kind of just are in the background for the most part uh, in the in the action sequences i mean they're fun and cool as hell we get to see them in action but as far as uh, overall presence a strong presence in the story it, it wasn't all that there and i thought the final action sequence like i thought the, the 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 action sequences towards the beginning of the story were a lot more hype and exciting than the overall final uh confrontation you know for i thought there wasn't as enough uh, creativity or imagination with the way this uh, the uh, the fights and the choreography was concerned I, I mean I think body for the most part body the body count was a lot higher in the final confrontation but uh, it just it just felt like just one guy slashing against so many dudes and you know it got pretty boring and repetitive after a while and then you got to the final final uh, confrontation within this big fight and the way it ended I felt it was a bit anticlimactic there should have been a bit more uh, granted, I don't know how well or accurate it, accurately it covered how it played out in the original story, but the way it felt like on screen, it felt like just anticlimactic. I just wanted a bigger, more impactful ending, and I didn't really get that. But overall, what did I think of Laughing Under the Clouds? You know, it was fun. You know, I, you know, as 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 much as I say about with the, with the negatives, I still thought it was a fun and entertaining movie. It's definitely not one of the best live actions I've seen. You know, uh, granted, uh, you know, uh, looking into it as an overall movie. It's not one of the best live actions I've seen, nor is it one of the worst. I'd say it's somewhere uh, like in the middle. Like the way I think it's the way I felt about Motohiro Katsuyuki's previous live action, uh, Ajin. Now, you know, I didn't think it was all that bad, or nor did I think it was all that good. It was somewhere right in the middle. You know, it, it was fun and enjoyable for what it was, but as far as something I hold in high regards for live action adaptations, it's definitely not one. You know, it, that, th those, uh, that title would definitely go to the Rurouni Kenshin movies. I think when it comes to just being some of the best live action adaptations, overall, Rurouni Kenshin is definitely up there. And as I said previously, this movie is definitely one for the latest because there are no girls allowed to play in the main cast of the story. It's all dudes. And, you know, Fukushisota, you have 
a really excellent dude at the helm of it all. So definitely watch this if you just want something fun and easy and light, full of action-packed sequences and many scenes you can just get excited over. But I don't think it's a movie you should definitely, uh, that you should, uh, you know, realistically go out of your way to watch because, you know, I don't think you're missing anything crucial or groundbreaking if you miss out on this movie. But it's still fun to enjoy nonetheless. But yes, those are my thoughts on Laughing Under the Clouds. What did you guys think? Please let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you really dig my content, please know you can support Agent Films via Patreon from as little as $1. And guys, don't forget to join the Discord. We're all waiting for you there. And that's about it for me, guys. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. and hope to see you all again in the next video. Take it easy.